Hi, I'm Bill Woodard. Welcome to the July edition of the Smith County Chamber Corner. Well, welcome to the show. We've got a lot of guests showing up here and uh, we're gonna be talking about summer things and things here at uh, Cordell Hall Dam. And so uh, we've got a good show planned for you. But first, we'd like to cut to Mr. Gabe Harville with In the Wild. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In the Wild with Gabe Harville. As you can tell by the woods behind me, I am not in Tennessee. I'm currently in Alaska at Kepler Lake and fishing for trout with my 4-H friends. I've took some pictures throughout this Alaskan adventure and I hope to share what I learned from this experience and show those pictures off to you. Here's some of the views from our cottage that we stayed in at Palmer. I hope you enjoyed this scenery as much as I have. However, if you got close enough, the scenery wasn't so different from that in Tennessee. The forests were lush, the trees were green, and the grass was growing, just like home. The first full day we spent in Alaska, we did one of my favorite hobbies, fishing. We went to Kepler Lake, and I was fortunate enough to catch my first trout. It was a rainbow trout, and boy did I sure love catching him. You can see here, I got a rainbow trout in my hands. I just caught it. I'm going to release it. Thanks, buddy, for making my day. As I mentioned, we went to Kepler Lake, and besides the trout, the scenery was beautiful. With the sunset bouncing off the mountains in the distance, it reflected just right across the crystal clear water. It was a sight to behold. Even while in the more populated areas, such as the heart of downtown Palmer, you can see why these people are so connected to the wilderness. It quite literally surrounds them. The following images and videos you're about to see were all taken atop Hatcher's Pass. Y'all may get a kick out of these videos because my 4-H buddies that were on the trip with me actually helped me film them. y'all can see I'm on this snow covered mountain it gets pretty deep up here especially I mean man can fall right in luckily I got on my trusty hiking boots so I'm good well yep, nearly slipped there well the only thing I can say about this place is it's a good place for snowball fight <laughs> there were lots of things to do in Anchorage one of those things was visit the Alaska Native Heritage Center. We learned about Alaskan natives and their cultures and how they survived the harsh Alaskan climate. I'm here at the Alaska Native Heritage Center and behind me is a skeleton of what is left of a 42 foot gray whale. Our tour guide, he said it washed up in the Cook Inlet, which is somewhere over there. And they bleached it off and they brought it here. We also had the chance to go to the Alaskan Botanical Gardens. Despite Alaska's colder climate, their soils can grow some beautiful plants.
After spending time at the botanical gardens, we drove along the Cook Inlet coast to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center in Seward. While at the conservation center, we had the chance to learn about animals like moose, elk, caribou, bears, bison, and muskox. After all the fun and games in Anchorage, we made our way to Mirror Lake where I had the chance to spend some quality time with my 4-H buddies. What a great way to end the day. You got this girl. Oh no, I gave him my phone. I don't wait on you. Let's go. Come on. I really don't think I can. You can do it. You got this. Woo! Come on. Oh god. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible. Come on, Mr. Grove. This is as fast as I'm going. <laughs> now my knees are gonna be all stained. <laughs> Y'all going to help me. <laughs> Put those cameras up. <laughs> Raw. Watch your hand. Uh, I'm going to need more than you, Waylon. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. Oh, God. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Yeah. <laughs> We have the privilege of having a park ranger with us uh, here, and we're at the core. Uh, I don't know that this, is this our, considered our local headquarters? Yes, so this would be our local headquarters for Cordell Hall Lake. Okay, all right, uh, I'll tell you what, I've jumped ahead of myself. Ashley, introduce yourself, to tell them what's your position in everything. So I'm park ranger Ashley Webster. I work here at Cordell Hall Lake for the Corps of Engineers, um, and I am our environmental protection specialist. Okay, now there's a lot of things going on. It's summer, uh, everybody hit the ground running, and so there's, there's a lot of stuff to do here at Cordell Hall Lake. And uh, if you, it may be a little hard to do, but could you kind of in your mind go around to the different things that's going on here in the park that's available? Like right now we're at the Visitor Center. So right here at the Visitor Center, um, we are open Monday through Saturday. Um, behind us, we have the Turkey Creek Nature Trail. Um, so it's a short trail. It's paved that um, a lot of locals use and utilize in the mornings and on the weekends. Um, of course, we have Defeated Creek Recreation Area open. If you haven't been through there, we have some great improvements. We got funding for uh, repaving of the Defeated Creek Day Use, um, the beach area. And in the free area, what we call the free area where the basketball courts and the tennis court is, um, we've got LED uh, light lighting put up. So for years we've had issues with the timer, especially when there was power outages. Now everything's running smooth and uh, we definitely promote our volleyball players to come out till 10 p.m. And then of course, in Defeated Creek Campground, we are packed just about every weekend, um, even throughout the week. So our visitation has greatly increased. Um, Defeated is now top, top five in the nation of Corps of Engineer Campgrounds. Yeah, well, I, I knew it was very high up there. It is. And then outside of the campground, we have um, two trails, unique trails. We have the Bear Waller Gap Hiking Trail, and we have the Bear Wheels Bike Trail. Okay, and then uh, uh, you opened uh, another one up over uh, on the other end of the county. It may be in, partly in Jackson and Smith. It, it may lie between both counties. Um, yes, that was the Periwinkle Hiking Trail. The Friends of Cordell Hall Lake and just a volunteer force are the ones that put that trail in. Um, we helped map it and lay it out, um, but they did 90% of the work. Okay, and there's two marinas on the lake. Uh, there's, there's Wildwood, of course which is over at Granville near that. And then Defeated Creek Marina is right here. And uh, those folks, uh, uh, I love those guys. They, they, they do a great job. Uh, what, do you know 
what's going on there, I, you, that's probably not something that you have to keep up with. No, um, they haven't sent any uh, recent request in for improvements or expansion of their facilities, um, but they're definitely probably busier than ever. Yeah, and I know they, they are having some weekend uh, uh, shows and bands and things like that coming on, so we'll, we'll try to get that information for you. Um, Ashley, the uh, lake itself, uh, the, the visitor number is increasing every year, and I know safety is an issue. We talked about that with uh, uh, Dr. Branton, and uh, I just thought you might want to just say something or, or about that. I mean, yes, yeah, sa safety is an issue. It's an ongoing issue as our visitation increases. I also feel like our experience, our experience outdoorsmen is decreasing. Um, these days you can go to Walmart, you can go to Dunham's, you can, you can go to any big box store and purchase a kayak for a couple hundred dollars, um, which I think is a great way to get people outdoors, but it's also a scary way. Um, a lot of people hit the water in their paddle boards, paddle sports, and don't realize they have to have a life jacket it on board um, then also with that comes uh, the the dangers when you're out on a boat um, I'm sh I don't know if you've seen the lake today but it is it looks like chocolate milk and it is debris because of all the recent rain we've had um, so you combine an inexperienced boater um, with certain lake conditions or certain traffic around the peak season and uh, it, it can it can uh, come with some risk okay and, and the key th phrase I think it was at the beginning uh, if you got a life jacket on you, you're making yourself a lot safer. Yes, absolutely. Have a life jacket on. Um, I like to say the more uncomfortable a life jacket is, probably the more safe it is. Um, and then there's also inflatable life jackets, which inflate either by pulling the rip cord or by water pressure. Um, so those are great alternatives as well, especially if you're just going from point A to point B or shoreline fishing. Yeah, and I, I know when I kayak, I just I put mine on and just leave it on. Mm -hmm. I got one of those that you zip up and and you just leave it on. And I've gotten so accustomed to it that it, it's, it's just part of the trip. It is, and it, it's part of being able to make it make it home at the end of the evening. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, the other thing we wanted to mention, uh, you, you have uh, several things that are happening on the lake, and, and I'm, not, I'm not sure I know it specifically, but you've got some events that are taking place. I know we're in our 50th year here. We are. Um, so Cordell Hall Dam is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Um, a few things that we have going on around the lake uh, is we have a rowing the river event with Jackson County. I know, I know this is oh, you know, right. focused on Smith County, but we're working with them to help support a paddle craft event. Um, it's a race or a float event um, so that will take place at Roan River on July 15th so a couple weeks from now and we have another dam tour scheduled for October 7th um, that is the same day as our dedication and we'll jump right back to that but we also have a fish and derby scheduled the seventh or the the Saturday of Labor Day weekend at Roaring River as well. So last year was our first year doing the fishing derby with the kids. Um, we're gonna bring it back this year. We just had to push it further into the season. Um, but I wanna jump back into the dedication. So we've had two um, public tours open to the public with the Powerhouse and Lock. Um, this past Saturday was our second one. It was a great success. And October 7th is our dedication, like I mentioned. Um, that morning we have two more tours that are open that as of this morning are not filled up yet So if someone is interested in taking a dam tour and a lock tour, they need to sign up It's on our Facebook page and our website That afternoon we have the actual dedication which will take place outside of the lock unless weather forces us to come inside and then the friends of Cordell Hall Lake have a quite large, I want to call it a secretive event in the works. They haven't um, come together and voted on it yet, so I can't release it, um, but it's something that we are extremely, extremely excited for, and I hope I hope everyone on the board goes for it, and it'll be a great fundraiser for them. But if not, we completely understand. Okay, well, now, and since you mentioned Friends of Cordell Hall Lake, uh, that is a uh, group that has been formed, and their name kind of says that what it is friends of cordell hall lake they're going to do anything they can to support what's going on here at cordell lake in smith jackson and clay county and 
uh, all the cities involved and everything. So they're working in co coordination with the Corps mm -hmm. to do uh, a lot of things that you've not been able to do before. Yes, yeah, so not only are they just an extra set of hands to support our mission, um, they, they also can do certain elements that we can't. Um, we have some restrictions. For example, we had a group-led Bear Waller Gap trail hike this past spring. They were the ones that purchased um, the, the rental of the, <coughs> the U-carts, um, as well as the granola bars and the refreshments. Those are restrictions that we can't do. Um, so they were able to step in and fund that. So as you mentioned, they are a 501C, so they are always accepting donations. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, speaking of that, uh, you have one of the uh, projects in the, in your hand, and they're working with the in conjunction with the Noon Rotary, Rotary uh, Smith County Rotary over in. Uh, uh, that meet over in Gordonsville. Yes, so we are extremely excited about this. Um, I don't know if Noon Rotary planned this, but um, it, it all fell in conjunction uh, by coincidence or not, but we, the core, the friends, and Noon Rotary are getting the word out there regarding 50th anniversary knives. Um, so this is a fundraiser for both Rotary and the friends. Um, they both come in a carved wooden case. What do you think about that? I think that's beautiful. I love the stamp, too, 50 years. Yes. And then inside is a fast fact card regarding the dam and some construction photos. And then there are two versions of the knives. There's a case version. Um, that has some engraving celebrating the 50th anniversary, and then there's a Warrior brand knife as well. Um, the case are $45 donate. The case are $75 donation, and the Warriors are $40 donations. Yeah, and those are really nice knives. They, they, uh, the club actually did Candy Fork River, I think maybe last year or one of the ensuing years, and uh, that that is a beautiful knife. Uh, it's it's one of those that uh, I, I bought two of them and I thought I'd use one of them but it's so pretty I haven't got it out of the case yet so uh, if anybody wants one of those knives where can they uh, find out about it so um, from the friends standpoint we are selling them here at the visitor center Monday through Saturday um, so uh, regarding payment on these it would be cash or check uh, the checks would need to be made out to the friends of Cordell Hall Lake Okay, and this organization is a volunteer organization, so if you are living in the area, or maybe you don't live in the area, but you, you love Cordell Hall Lake and what's going on here, you can join this organization and become a part of uh, the events and things that are happening here, and uh, you can also find out and get information about that here at the uh, Visitor Center as well. And uh, they are a wonderful organization. Uh, this is a wonderful pairing, and... Uh, uh, I, I just think it's a, a, a great example of how government and private uh, entities can work together to make Absolutely. something better. Mm -hmm. I really do. Okay, the big secret is Dolly coming to the dedication. That is not the big secret, but it is still <laughs> in the works. Um, that is still in the works. We have a couple different angles working on that. Um, Fingers crossed, toes crossed, we'll see if that happens, um, but that is not the big secret. Okay, well, uh, the uh, uh, dedication that they had 50 years ago, uh, uh, Dolly Parton, who, who is a Tennessee icon, and and uh, I, I've never met, met anybody that didn't like her. Uh, I know I, I've never met her, and, and I have great thoughts about her, but uh, she was here for that dedication and obviously it would be very difficult to get her for this one. Yeah, because I believe she's actually celebrating her 50th anniversary of her music career. So um, both things are lining up. I like to think that she started her career here. I don't know if she would say that. <laughs> um, but uh, so we're, we're trying to get her. We'll see how it pans out. Yeah, well, and, and if you don't, it's, it's one of those things that is still wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, Ashley, uh, is there anything we missed? Uh, anything you'd like to say before we go? Uh, we just want to remind everyone once again, wear your life jacket, um, know how to swim, follow us on our Facebook page, just search for Cordell Hall Lake, um, as well as the Friends. The Friends have a Facebook page as well. Look up Friends of Cordell Hall Lake on that one as well. So, um, yeah, that's it. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Thank you, Bill. Okay, we uh, again, some of my favorite people here. Uh, UT Extension is such a wonderful uh, organization in our county and, and do so much. So 
Uh, ladies, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves, and then uh, we'll we'll go through what's going on today. So. Okay. I'm Mary Parker Draper. I'm the FCS Extended Agent for Smith County. Um, I'm Mackenzie Mason, and I'm the Altria intern this summer at with the Smith County Extension Office. Okay, and we've got some really good programs going on at UT Extension's involved with. Mary, I, I think uh, you had something you wanted to talk about particularly. Yes, yeah, so as you're getting those fresh garden vegetables in, um, we're excited to have a canning college this summer. Um, we'll have a hands-on canning college um, in July. So those dates are July the 19th and the 21st. That's a Wednesday and Friday. For both days, it's $30, and you just need to call the Extension Office to register. Um, but we'll learn about the science behind both water bath canning and pressure canning. And then that second day is when we're actually going to be making marmalade and also salsa. Um, we also have a summer series called the Extension Explorers. We had um, one segment already, but we are having two other segments come up. So I think for July, we're doing long-term food storage. Um, this is completely free. It's on Zoom. So if you're interested in that, um, call the Extension Office as well. And then August, I think we're doing curing meats. Yeah, and anybody can do canning, right? Uh, my son, uh, believe it or not, uh, it, it wasn't long ago, we got some extra, I, f I forget what it was. I think it was uh, uh, I'm, I'm strawberries. Yeah. And uh, he, he actually canned and, and made some of that, and I was shocked. Yes. And, and then I was doubly shocked when I opened the can, and it was actually good. <laughs> Well, so. I'm sure it was. So uh, if you want to learn how to can, uh, we definitely encourage you to come to the Extension Office. Uh, we, uh, ha there's lots of different people that, uh, as Bill said, do that uh, expertise. So um, we just want to make sure that we're using tested recipes and the proper canning method. So that's kind of the steps we use at, uh, when we're talking about canning college. But yes, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, and, and when I was growing up, that was the... The mm -hmm. majority of our food came from them doing that. This right. time of year, you'd start canning whatever was coming in, they'd call it. Mm -hmm. Whatever was coming in, they would can that, and then you'd have shelves of that for the, for the winter. Mm -hmm. I think definitely during the pandemic, um, it kind of became a, a hot commodity. So um, if anybody's interested, we definitely would love to have you. Yeah, a lot of good stuff this year to do that. Now, Mackenzie, uh, you wanted to talk about a couple of different things. Uh, why don't you just take off? <laughs> All right, so coming up, starting in August, for the first Tuesday of August, September, and October, we have a Lunch and Learn series coming up. So we're going to be joined by three different people. I mean, in August, we're going to learn from Jason Garrett about renovating your lawn. In September, we're going to learn from Lucas Hallman about cool season gardening. And then Katie Martin is going to finish us up in October with cool flowers. Okay. That, that's that's a uh, uh, they've done several of those there yeah. at the chamber, yeah, and, at the chamber. And, and it's well attended. It is. And I think uh, I hope I'm not getting you in trouble. Do you serve lunch too? We do five you okay. five dollars. Call the extension office by the Friday before the series. Um, serve lunch, and then you get to learn and ask any questions that you may have. Yeah, I, I know those those are good programs, and the people yeah. that I've seen in there uh, seem to really enjoy them when they're. Yeah. they're talking about it when they're leaving. There was one other thing, uh, uh, your leadership. Yes, last week we got to follow along with the adult leadership group in Smith County. Katie kind of got to lead the agricultural day. We got to visit a few farms. We got to go by the co-op, kind of see how they run things. And then where else did we go? Uh, well, we went to Katisa Farms. That's right, and we went to Kyle Owens. Kyle Owens Farm. And, uh, Dillard Angus Beach. Dillard right Angus, there. yeah. And, and it was a really good day. It and, and it's kind of funny you have, uh, I, I don't know if anybody else notices this, but we've got some really successful farmers here. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one group of them, they have no animals and they're very successful. Then we have another group that they're all animals, all animals and they're very successful. So it looks like you can take your pick of which direction mm -hmm. you want to go. Uh, the one thing I thought was, uh, uh, I told Kyle, I said, well, you've never got a call at midnight about a watermelon getting in the road. No. So, so uh, raising cattle, uh, it, it, that is another uh, whole thing because it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sort of like the uh, dairy, which uh, I think we still have one dairy farm here in the county. So uh, a lot of good, a lot of good things going on with the farming, yes, yeah. and uh, I know Peaceful Pastures. Their chamber member, they're over in Lancaster, and uh, they do organic farming, and, and they're more into the animals and the meat. 
and then of course Gore Farms, uh, they're more into the vegetables. And uh, can you guys think of uh, who am I not naming? Uh, of course, George McDonald Catiz Farms, they have strawberries and um, watermelons. Right. And Kyle have watermelons. Um, so there's there's a variety. And then of course the farmer's market, yeah, uh, they came and talked about that. Yes, they did. Yeah, that, we started the morning with the farmer's market. Yeah, and, and that's a, uh, I don't know if, if you're out there and you have vegetables and you're growing and you want to sell them, uh, all you got to do is become a member of the farmers, I, I forget what the name is. I think the easiest way is probably just to contact Ronnie Bissell. Yeah, Ronnie Bissell is the president of the organization and uh, he will set you up and you can sell your stuff right there at the farmer's market. And he says, uh, he, he mentioned this, you backed me up. Uh, most people, uh, when they go, they sell out quicker than they think they're going to. He did say that. Yeah, so uh, it, it's a good thing. Well, is there anything else we need to talk about? I think that's it. We um, always welcome any questions you have about family and consumer sciences or ag related topics at the Extension Office. Our number is 615-735-2900. Okay, and ladies, thank you for coming by. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Okay, we are here and uh, at, at the expense of being rude to all my other guests. These are some of my favorite folks here. Uh, I, I, the theater, uh, I've been involved in a few plays. But, but before I get into all of that, I, I'll let you all introduce yourself and tell them who you're with. Start right here. Hello, I'm Crystal McCall and um, I'm here with uh, the Smith County Fine Arts Center Theater. And I'm Jennifer Honey, I'm also with the uh, Smith County Fine Arts Center. Okay, and you guys are on the board, right? Yes, we are. Okay, and so uh, I know you got a lot of things, and we'll try to talk about all of it coming up, but uh, I have had the privilege of working with these folks uh, over the past few years, and it has really been a pleasure. And if you've ever thought about getting involved in community theater, it's a lot of fun, and uh, these guys would be happy to talk to you about that. Uh, anyway, Crystal, I'm sure you had something specific you wanted to talk about, so why don't we start with you? and. Uh, just let us know what's on your mind. Okay, well, we just finished auditions for Steel Magnolias a couple of weeks ago, and so we've selected our cast. Our performance for that will be um, in the fall. It's going to be a fall play, and we're thinking tentatively the uh, weekend of October 27th and November 3rd, so those weekends. Okay, and that'll be at the courthouse, the historic courthouse right on the main street there. Yes. On okay. the second level. On the second level. Now, I know, Miss Jennifer, you make a lot of nice pictures and post them. So, uh, is there, there a Facebook page they can go to? to uh, yes, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I think it is, I think it's the Smith County Fine Arts Center mm -hmm. slash theater. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's on it's Facebook. A, so, they can go and they can see some of your artwork, your your See uh, some of the pictures, pictures yes. And uh, you, we've got some that we've got lots of really good actors and I hope I try to catch them in their finest moments. <laughs> yeah. Well and, and it's been a pleasure to, to look at some of the stuff that you've put out there. Now uh, you said uh, uh, it's going to be a fall play and then uh, obviously you're going to be doing more in the future and, and, and I'm sure you don't really know what the future holds but uh, uh, there are plans to do more plays right? Yes there is right now um, we have, we're going to be set up at the fair, at the Smith County Fair in a few, what, next week. And we're going to have a booth there, so if anybody has any questions or wanted to stop by and see us there, we'll be there. Um, we're also going to be involved in the Jeepers Creepers that's yeah. coming up for Halloween, and we're going to participate in that. So we're um, trying to get out in the community as much as possible. And uh, so that's what... Well, and I'm probably putting you on the spot here, but I would love for you guys to do a vignette of some sort. Uh, uh, presentation at Walton Days, uh, if, if you can do that. I tried to get Bill, uh, our, our uh, I guess, mentor, uh, my mentor in the theater was Bill Reese, mm -hmm. and uh, he and I talked about uh, doing a play uh, about Smith County and and actually the formation of it, and, and it never got past that talking point, so I don't know, maybe you guys can uh, take something like that and run That's with it. It's quite interesting, the history that we have here, and I think it would be good to have that. Um, okay, so you, you guys are going to continue with the theater. I'm sure you, uh, you'll you do some stuff. Uh, uh, do you have any plans for Christmas, or uh, that's not in the works yet? And I, I presume you'll do a spring play. So, yes. Yes, we've already mentioned we've not talked 
a specific play, but we've definitely been talking about a spring play. Mm -hmm. um, Christmas, we've, we've mentioned it, but we haven't really, you know, formalized anything. Yeah, I know uh, Bill did too, and uh, I'll be home for Christmas, and I don't uh, remember. Let's say it was, uh, it was the, uh, the class of 59 yeah. was centered around that year when they graduated. Yeah, and it Christmas was on Main Street, I think it was. Right, and, and it was really good. And I, I remember I actually got to sing in that one. I know it's hard to believe I could sing, but. He sings very well. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. And I always liked the ones that are the musicals. That was the ones mm -hmm. that I gravitated toward, and Bill uh, knew that. And so I was able to get involved in that. Well, uh, is there anything else we need to talk about other than folks, if you want to get involved in community theater, these folks can help you. How would they get in touch or how would they find out more about what's going on with you guys? Well, they can make a comment on the Facebook page, certainly. Mm -hmm. And we try to answer as quickly as possible. Um, Jeffrey Grissom is our director now. Uh, he. Uh, has stepped into some very big shoes, but he is capable of taking care of things. It's going to, I think it's going to take a lot of people to fill those shoes. But uh, he, you know, he's a hard worker, and we're really looking forward to the upcoming play. Of course, we've done Steel Magnolias before, and it was well received. So we're excited now to oh, yeah. reprise that. It was a very good production, and I, I remember that being, uh, uh, and if you want to see something that's funny, and uh, they get better as time goes on. Every time there's a performance, it, it, it <laughs> seems like the next one, it, it improves. So uh, it's it's a good thing to, to be there. Well, ladies, thank you for coming. And, thank you uh, for inviting us. Yeah, and I uh, hope you'll come back again and tell us about the next play that's coming up, okay? All right. Sounds good. Thank, All right. you. thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to have a, a visitor and, and a representative from Ball State here. Sean, if you would introduce yourself, tell them what your job is at Ball State. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean Scanlon. I'm the coordinator of student recruitment uh, for Volunteer State Community College. Okay, now, now you've got some programs that are really, really interesting. And, and I know uh, Tennessee Promise takes care of kids in high school and, and brings them up and gets them into college, but you've also got a program for folks that uh, maybe they're out, they're already working, uh, they're, they're thinking about maybe taking some courses, and that's called, uh, you, you call it Tennessee Reconnect, right? Yes, sir. Could yes. you uh, tell us what uh, Vol State's doing with Tennessee Reconnect? Yes, sir. Uh, Tennessee Reconnect is a great program. Uh, so in 2015, when the FOCUS Act passed with then-Governor Haslam, uh, you know, he created the Tennessee Promise, and it, it really helped Tennesseans, right? With the average American walking around with over $37,000 in student debt, you know, they made a decision right there to help cut that in half for Tennessee <clears throat> residents, allowing them to go to two years to a community college for free. And he had, a, he had an audacious goal. He wanted Tennessee to be uh, not last in education like we were back in the day. He wanted to get us up to 55% of our population have some sort of post-secondary education. And Tennessee Promise wasn't enough. So Tennessee Reconnect came about. And right now, it's uh, if you're 23 years old, you don't have a degree, uh, we can probably help you out graduating with two years and not have any student debt. OK, yeah. and it goes from 23 to 65. Yes, sir. Yep. And, and I was all bummed out about that. And I, well, what about a 66-year-old? <laughs> well, I found out uh, you don't pay tuition in Tennessee if you're over 65. Is that right? That's right. Yep. No, you can come on down, and we'll get you some classes. You can audit all the ones you want. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, uh, OK, uh, you also have opportunities for somebody, if you're, you're uh, an employer out there, uh, say they've got a restaurant or a or big concern like uh, the mine that we have here, uh, what opportunities do you have for those people? Oh, uh, well, we are one of the leading um, OSHA trainers in the, in, in the area. So if they have any kind of concerns, we're happy to help them with that. We do a lot of uh, help with workforce. So. Uh, a local company near Star Mines. Uh, we were happy to partner with them. They're a great partner. And they're very interested in our mechatronics program, which uh, is a fancy way of saying it, it's automation mm -hmm. and, and programming. It's uh, PLCs and different things like that. And so, you know, those miners are very skilled and they can't be replaced by robots. But there's some areas to where they can send in. And, and that's uh, uh, very important because that 
you know, we're taking care of the lives of the people and we can risk the robot going in there. So, exactly. yeah, there, there's all sorts of opportunities and we're, we like to say we put the community in community college. We like to put it first. Uh, so any, any local business, we're happy to partner with them and see what we can do to help with their workforce needs. Well, you have uh, obviously uh, larger companies like uh, Nearstar and, and people have a lot of employees, you can help them, but you yeah. can also help smaller businesses too, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we have uh, entrepreneurship classes, so if they want to sharpen those skills, we can help them with that, with, with marketing. Uh, if they need help, uh, you know, workforce, we're, our students need, they, they, want, they don't want to be caught in that catch-22, 22, right? We can't hire you without experience but you can't get experience without getting hired. So that's where internship programs come in. And we're very happy to help uh, find an intern that fits your need for the local business. I remember going through that when I was young, uh, trying to uh, find a job. And of course, programs like this didn't exist. And I ran into that very situation so many times. We, we'd hire you, but you don't have any experience. Well, <laughs> you know, if nobody won't hire me. So uh, it, it's wonderful that uh, we have these programs and, and opportunities for people to come through. Now, how does somebody get in contact with you if they want to uh, say they're watching this program? How, how do they find you? What do they do? Uh, they can uh, email me or call me. Uh, my email is Sean, S-H-A-U-N dot Scantland, S-C-A-N-T-L-A-N-D at volstate.edu. And if all else fails, if you can't remember that name, admissions at volstate.edu. Well, okay. It'll get to me if you just ask for me. And then you can always call me at 931-520-0551. Okay, and we didn't get into this, but there's also scholarship programs and, and uh, money available for people to be able to continue their education if they want to, uh, student loans. There's a lot of programs out there that you can help them with, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, most of our students are graduating debt-free through whether it's money through the FAFSA, or uh, whether it's Tennessee Promise, Tennessee Reconnect, you know, we, we in Tennessee we value education, and we're seeing it. You know, that rising tide lifts all boats. Have, uh, boats having a, an educated populace is very important. So, uh, if you've got a desire and you've got time, we'll find the money for you. Well, and, and, and to, to belabor and maybe extend the interview a bit, uh, the technology is shifting as we speak and jobs that are very common right now may not be so common in the near future and so uh, these technical degrees are going to be something that will save people and, and allow them to continue to work oh yes for sure we, we've got uh two different ways really three different ways we can really help out in, in that manner like we've got the the mechatronics program that we mentioned earlier so if students want to get into automation we can help them and uh industry truck driving a lot of jobs are being replaced by robots and our students are graduating with those skills to program those robots and work on those robots. Uh, you know, and they can make sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year with a two year degree. Uh, graduate debt free and be making that kind of money, that's that's pretty nice for the upper Cumberland. And of course we have other programs like the paramedic program. So uh, if they wanna make sure that they're helping people and feeling good about uh, uh, you know, being involved with their community and really saving lives. They can make over 60k a year working 10 days a month. Uh, our nursing program, uh, you can become an RN in two years. You know, it's not a four-year degree. You can become a registered nurse. All you have to do is pass that NCLEX exam. We can get you ready to pass that in two years. And if you decide to be a travel nurse, you can make close to six figures. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's amazing the money that's out there and graduated with no student debt. That's the the number one thing. Uh, but even if you are wanting to go on to a university. You know, our what we call our Tennessee transfer pathways. So you can do half of a bachelor's degree with us for no money and then transfer on to a university. You know, and, and we're lucky in Tennessee. We've got some very affordable universities. I think uh, the average cost of uh, a Tennessee Tech degree in Cookville is over fifty thousand uh, dollars. So uh, I, I, we're cutting that in half. So we're saving over twenty five thousand dollars just by going to a college, you know, a community college. Mm -hmm. uh, the University of Tennessee is uh, over $130,000. So depending on which university, it depends on what kind of savings you can have by doing 60 hours with us and then going on and finishing that last 60 at the university. Right, well, it just, it just makes sense. A person, everybody ought to look into it at least and decide what, what path they want to go. Uh, for sure, and for someone like me, I, I grew up in a, in a small town. There was like 60 people in my graduating class. And it's pretty nerve-wracking to go into a university and uh, sit in a lecture hall with 200 other people. 
uh, you know, I was a little more at home in my community college and to build up that confidence, you know, and then, then realize, hey, I do belong here and I can do this. And so when I did go on to university, I was, I had all the confidence in the world because of what I built at the community college. Yeah. Well, Sean, I, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming by and, and, and telling us about these things. And uh, uh, once again, let's leave them with a uh, contact of uh, Ball State and uh, what's uh, some good numbers or something to okay. call? Yes, sir. Uh, admissions at vaultstate.edu is a great way to email us and get some information. Uh, or you can call us at 931-520-0551. All right. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're here at the Cordell Hall Visitor Center, and if you've never been here, you need to make a stop up here and see what all they've got. Got a lot of good information here and everything. But right now we're interviewing a lady, Miss Stephanie Winfrey. Stephanie, why don't you tell them you're kind of here for two things. Uh, let's start off with the uh, bash first. Uh, tell them what's going on. All right, so Smith County Events Committee is the nonprofit I chair, um, and we do the back to school bash. We started it last year. Last year we gave out over $10,000 in free school supplies to Smith County students in public schools or homeschooled or private schooled. Um, this year we're hoping to at least match that, if not double. It is on July 29th from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the historic Cor Carthage Courthouse. Um, and if you are a business or something that wants to sponsor, I have all that information. I can email it to you. Just send us an email to smithcountyevents at gmail.com. Pretty simple. Hard to misspell that. <laughs> okay. And uh, if you uh, forget that, so you can call us at the chamber, 735-2093. Yep. And all of our sponsorships get sent to the chamber. So if you just want to send a check there, that's fine too. Okay. And uh, somebody that uh, they've got a child and they want to bring them. I mean, it's just basically the doors are open yep. and you come in and pick up. Just come in. We have it all sorted by, um, like, we'll have um, papers out with what your classes need. So it'll tell you, you know, New Middleton School, these grades need or don't need this item. So it's super simple for you to go through. We'll have QR codes that you can scan to see your child's supply list so long as the teachers have put it out for the public to see. Okay. And what are the requirements for you to attend? Uh, Just be a Smith County student or homeschool student or private school. Just be live in Smith County. Okay, so, so it's, it's open to anybody that's in the, in the county. Yep. Then. Well, that's a very good thing, and it's at the Smith County Historic Courthouse. Now, you have a business, you're a chamber member, and you have a business across the street called Rogue and Raven. Yep. And I think you've got a special event coming up. We do. In September, September 1st and 2nd, we have the Upper Cumberland Game Con. So it is all things nerd and gamer and geek um, role-playing games card games there we have vendors that have custom-made dice custom-made dice bags toys and figures and collectibles just every books we've got several authors that come and set up just everything you could want in a game con um, last year we had over 250 people come and we had about 18 vendors set up this year we've already got 20 vendor applications so it's looking to be bigger um, and it's two days this year last year it was only one Okay, and where is this at? The Ag Center, behind the Middle School and Board of Education. Okay, and uh, when it comes to GameCon, I know uh, that's getting more and more popular. Uh, when you're not having GameCon, your store is open and yep. you have similar stuff there, right? Yep, we are open six days a week, Tuesday through Sunday. We are open till 10 p.m. every night, and on weekends, we're open till midnight as long as people are still playing after 10. Okay. So, and, and the tables are free to play, and we've got over 100 free to play board games. And uh, board games, uh, card games, just about anything you can think of. You, you yep. guys got that. Board about. games, card games, role playing games. We've got learn to play kits for Magic and Pokemon <clears throat> and Digimon and One Piece. <laughs> okay. And what's your phone number there to to the business? So do you if you don't. Six one five. Yeah. 709-3007. You put me on the spot. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry about that. And they're, and they're right on Main Street, across from the historic uh, Smith County Courthouse. Yep. So remember, uh, we got Back to School Bash at the Courthouse. On July 29th. On July 29th, and we've got Game Con at the Ag Center. On September 1st and 2nd. Okay, so folks, if you're looking for something to do, there's... There's two things. Two things. We'll have games and yard games. Um, we're trying to get some bounce houses for the Back to School Bash, too, and cotton candy and popcorn. Okay. So they'll be fun too, not just school spots. <laughs> uh, well, Stephanie, thanks. Yep, thank you. Okay, we're uh, in the middle of summer here. Well, not in the middle. We're in the front edge of summer right now, and the middle's coming. And uh, there's a lot of things that people need to know about how to take care of themselves. And uh, we have a guest here. 
uh, from Riverview Regional that's going to be uh, helping us out. Would you introduce yourself and tell them your uh, role at uh, sure. River, Riverview? I'm Dr. Chris Bratton, and I'm general surgeon up here at Riverview, and we try to take care of, uh, among other things, skin cancers and uh, lesions on the face, which are um, a lot of times related to ultraviolet ray exposure and sun exposure and among other general surgery problems. That's the one I was uh, called upon to address here. Okay, well, I, I want to brag just a little bit, uh, and, and I think uh, you will agree. Uh, we, we have a really fine hospital here yes, sir. in Smith County. Uh, a lot of different things that you can go to them for. And I know uh, uh, in a couple of cases uh, in the past few years, uh, you go there and now they look at you and they go, well, uh, we can treat this here, but we feel like you'd be better served and they'll, they'll ship you somewhere. And I like that. I, th I think that's very, very good. I love, but you can do most stuff uh, in-house, and like you're saying, you're doing surgery. Uh, when it comes to skin cancer, how can people avoid that? What do they need to do this summer to protect themselves from that? Well, they're, they are uh, more and more prone to have ultraviolet index on the, ready, on the weather forecast. And uh, that comes in gradients. Eight to 10 is considered high, and 11, uh, very high. And just uh, of note that the uh, UV index for this next couple of days is 11. And under those conditions, a person needs to, uh, if they are going to be out in the sun, uh, use some form of sun protectant uh, lotion or cream, either chemical or mineral. <clears throat> There's a difference of opinion about which, which of those is better. Uh, a lot of people feel like the mineral uh, sunscreens are, are a little bit uh, better for the skin. They're less reactive. Uh, some of the ingredients in the chemical uh, sunscreens are, have not been completely defined. Uh, there's more absorption, there's more skin irritation, and um, there's questionable uh, lack of prevention of UVA exposure. Uh, the sunscreens mostly uh, try to prevent UV uh, B exposure, ultraviolet ray B exposure, which are actually the source of the skin cancer anyway, but the UVA light is more uh, inducive to the aging process. Uh, mineral uh, uh, sunscreens such as uh, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are uh, equally effective, if not more. They take a little bit longer to put on and uh, they have to be uh, applied diligently every two hours uh, but um, there, there is some preference on those by a lot of people. And um, there's also uh, several other different things that, that are worth noting is that protective clothing, which also has an abbreviation, UPF, <coughs> uh, ultraviolet protective factor, uh, which you would uh, put on and apply as the UV index goes up, uh, long sleeve shirts, uh, you know, it may be a wide brim hat, and even uh, in higher UV, UV index, consider an umbrella, particularly if you're at a higher altitude or in some of the more arid country, arid states in the country. Uh, so there's, um, uh, people are urged to do more protection than they used to be. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's some of the basic things that as far as ultraviolet uh, uh, skin protection, and a lot of that is based upon also the uh, skin type. Uh, they have a scale of Fitzpatrick uh, skin typing, which is zero to well, one to six. And that has to do with how light complected you are. The more light complected, I think everybody realizes they're more prone to, to burn, to have skin cancer, uh, particularly under the age of 35. And that, once again, well, we don't need to get into tanning beds, do we? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's sort of asking for it, isn't it? Yeah. That's a whole different subject, which maybe is uh, <clears throat> controversial or contentious, I guess. But um, among other things you're at risk for in this time of year is uh, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. I think people need to, um, are, are well aware of that, uh, but uh, hydration and being aware of the symptoms uh, of, um, of heat exhaustion and uh, heat stroke uh, as um, they are outside for a long period of time without adequate hydration. And um, so. Well, now in Texas right now, they're having 110 heat indexes, and I don't think that that's, that's the actual temperature 
and they're talking about how dangerous that is. Now, I don't know that – I know we haven't gotten to that here so far this year. Uh, I, I have been here in Middle Tennessee in my life. I've lived here all my life. And I can remember some 105 and 106 or 7 days, but I don't remember a very long extension of that. And I, and I know you're not a weatherman, so you don't really – and like me, we don't know what's coming. But a uh, uh, heat index above – a hundred would be a, a dangerous thing if you're uh, out and you're doing any act, kind of activity. Well, your body temperature goes up, and if it goes above 40 degrees centigrade or 104 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, uh, you are in, in the throes of a heat exhaustion or a heat stroke with a 40, 60, 40 to 60 percent mortality if, uh, if you allow your body to get exposed and, and to overheat to that extent. And there's also, uh, as you well know, people are more prone to exercise. There's a classical heat stroke, and then there's exercise-induced heat stroke, which you see and hear about more in the military and training. But there's a lot of um, uh, just amateur uh, sports enthusiasts that uh, can actually be uh, susceptible to that, too. So it's, it's a dangerous thing. Anytime you, your body temperature is going to be up, you need to be taking a rest or uh, is, is it advisable? I mean, uh, most people have a cold drink or something next to them. Uh, I, I would presume it. Uh, hydration is good, but I, I've often wondered about the temperature of, of the drink you're drinking, if that matters. One way or the I, other. I'm sure it is. I mean, they uh, emphasize when somebody comes into the emergency room to try to lower their temperature down uh, below 39 degrees within an hour by whatever methods they can do, uh, applying ice and um, other cooling uh, methods, but they, they, they need to rapidly uh, cool down uh, because of the uh, severe neurologic uh, side effects from the swelling I mean, uh, on the brain and different uh, aspects of the um, heat exhaustion. So. Well, uh, another safety issue, and they, they talk about it here, uh, the Corps of Engineers, they have signs up and everything. Uh, uh, people, of course, are going on the lake and they're swimming, and uh, we actually had a fatality here last year in one of the swimming areas uh, where a person stepped off in a deeper area, and, and uh, they've got this sign that they have up here. It says so many people, you know, have drowned in this lake uh, wearing a life jacket zero. And I, th I think that's something that you would probably agree with, that uh, if you're out on the water, you need to wear a life jacket and be Absolutely. thinking about uh, these things that we can do to, you know, sunscreen and, and making sure that you're in the shade or, or hydrated if you have to get out in it. And, and is there anything else we're missing that you wanted to speak about as far as safety? Well, uh, uh, of course, the SPF, uh, sunscreen ratings and um, that was really uh, the main things I was thinking about um, was just the uh, skin protection and once you do develop uh, a skin lesion which of course is going to develop later in life uh, you need to be um, attentive to that and have it have it checked uh, uh, melanoma there is um, a classification of how Frequency, frequent melanoma is, they've been able to lower that. You know, in Australia, for a long time, they had the world's leading uh, melanoma index. And uh, Florida still has, uh, I think, 29 uh, cases per thousand, 100,000 people. And um, so it's something you need to be uh, aware of, even uh, as far as uh, when you do have a lesion, to have it, uh, have it checked and have it evaluated. Well, one thing about skin cancer that I've always wondered, uh, it, it's, it's not a, like you're going to get it today. It, it, it happens, it can happen later on in life. What you do now, is there a time frame? I mean, does it hit you five years from now, ten years from now? Or how, how does that work on the uh, exposure index as far as when you get exposed and when you might possibly develop a skin Well, cancer. any ultraviolet exposure is causes DNA changes in the skin cells. And in fact, uh, tanning, uh, the process of tanning is a DNA change in the melanocytes in the, in the skin. So 
uh, something as simple as that uh, reflects a DNA change uh, in the um, uh, skin cells. So there is an alteration in the uh, exposure, especially secondary to a burn, which can uh, evolve over years into uh, various stages of pre-malignant and malignant disease. Um, so that uh, it's just the um, chromosomal change, or at least the effects on the skin DNA. Well, I know when I was a child, uh, uh, and, and as you can look at me and tell, uh, that's been a while. Uh, the people used to wear long sleeve shirts and, and bonnets and big hats and things like that because they realized, I guess, the, the danger even back then of uh, prolonged sun exposure. Uh, I, you do notice, though, as a person uh, tans, they, uh, you know, they get less and less susceptible to that. Anyway, if you uh, have any questions about that, I'm sure uh, that you can call uh, Riverview Regional and they'll be able to help you out with that. And Dr. Branton, uh, uh, unless you have something else. Uh, I just forgot, I wanted to mention there's certain medications if you're on that increases your risk for uh, uh, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and most of those are of course well known to people. Any beta blockers, diuretics, uh, alcohol, maybe, uh, I'm, sure it, I'm sure it could, but um, certain uh, stimulants uh, that you take for ADHD or uh, illicit drugs, cocaine, amphetamines, they all increase your uh, difficult control of your uh, heat uh, uh, thermoregulator and make it much more prone to heat exhaustion. Um, most of the uh, cardiac medications, I think, would uh, be fall in that category. So it's something you ought to consider also when you're out in the heat. You, you know, if you're on medicine, uh, you need to give it a second thought when you get out uh, overheated. Okay, so watch, watch the heat, watch out for the sun, and, and try to be as safe as you can. Dr. Bratton, thank you very much, sure. and uh, tell all the folks down at Riverview we said hello. I'll be glad to. Thank all you. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.